Welcome back to our gumdrop. This is where we finished up at the end of part one. We have a lovely looking gumdrop, but it could look lovelier if uh, we added some more notes. <laughs> Just threw some more nodes into the fray and it'll improve it. So we're gonna go deeper and uh, in, gonna introduce a few more nodes and complexities in this uh, finale of this gumdrop tutorial. So the biggest problem with our gumdrop currently is that the sugar is uniform. There is really no areas where there is more or less. It just happens to be that with a limited number, you're gonna have some areas with more and less. But as you increase it, you can see that it will just uniformly cover the gumdrop, okay? And nothing is uniformly distributed in life, <laughs> generally, um, but particularly with particles, right? Anything, sprinkles, sand on a beach, there's parts that'll build up and clump together. And indeed, with these little sugar candy things, or lollies as we call them in Australia, I went and bought some, looked at it up close, took a bite of a few of them, and uh, indeed, where some of them rub up against each other in the packet, the sugar will fall off. In other places, it'll build up or it's crystallized or it's, you know, it's a crevice or the, you know, whatever. Anyways, parts will have more sugar, right? So that, how do we do that? There's a number of ways you could do it. Um, you could do it with uh, like weight painting, right? Go into weight paint mode and paint some areas, but then you'd have to increase the geometry of your mesh and also it wouldn't be procedural and that's not fun, right? Anyone knows how to do that. We want to use a texture because that is procedural. It means when I duplicate it, I could create another one with a different texture, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we do this? Uh, we introduce a new node called the attribute sample texture which you will not see unless you're using version 2.93 upwards. So as of the time of this release, um, it's 2.92 is the uh, official version, but 2.93 is in alpha. I'll put a link to that so you can download it, but it's, it's the best one. It's got <laughs> a bunch of stuff in it that you need, a bunch of improvements to geometry nodes because geometry nodes is improving every single day. It's really cool. So anyways, this is the one we need, attribute sample texture, which you might think like, that's a weird place. Like, why isn't it in a texture section? Well, at, I mean, there's a bunch in the attribute section because attributes can be used anywhere. So this is sampling a texture which can drive any attribute, attribute sample texture. Anyways, as you can probably guess, you start with clicking new, and giving a new texture, and then you go to the texture panel over here. Make sure you're looking at the right texture. Blend is weird with its textures. Sometimes you accidentally start changing a texture and then you realize, oh, it's the brush texture. Anyway, um, okay, and we want this to, drive the density of our sugar. So we could call it uh, sugar density. It's not gonna, that name isn't gonna make a difference. It's just for us. And then the type, like all the time, <laughs> we're gonna choose clouds. That's the most useful of all the procedural textures. If I could just pick one, it would be that one. Okay, now nothing has happened because for starters, it's not even in our node tree, but um, yeah, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, so um, where should it go? Okay, well, we want it to drive where the points are actually gonna be placed. So therefore the point distribute node is deciding where those points are placed. So it needs to go before that. So I'm gonna drop it in right there. Let's, oh, let's move, hey, let's move you out of the way. Okay, all right. And uh, mapping, okay, so the mapping is talking about texture mapping. You could do UV mapping, you could do generated mapping, etc., etc. When I first started this, I typed in generated <laughs> and then uh, was annoyed that nothing was working. And then I was like, I couldn't be bothered Googling it. Documentation subpar at the moment, I'm sure. Um, and then someone told me, actually Arendelle on Twitter told me, oh yes, um, it's position, position. Um, and it was, I, my feedback was like, why is there another word? We've got generated for materials and now we've got position for geometry node, even though they do the exact same thing. I've been given an explanation, but you know, it's uh, <laughs> to me, it's like another term we have to remember, but evidently position is gonna be used a lot in geometry nodes. So anyways, that is generated, okay? The texture mapping. Then the result, okay? We wanted to drive something. Now over here, we, we entered in scale, rotation, etc., And those are things that the nodes, geometry nodes understands. That exact term knows to drive the scale of the points. Um, but this one, it doesn't have a defined term, which means we need to create one, okay? So you can type in anything you want, a single letter, the mother's maiden name, whatever you want, 
something memorable, okay, <laughs> or, or that you'll be able to distinguish. Density makes sense to me. And where are we gonna put it? In the only empty field of point distribute, density attribute. So this is gonna override its current everywhere uh, placement and instead put it where the texture is, okay? And you can see something has changed. Not much, but something has changed. And you really have to kind of crank up the number of, um, I almost called them particles again, points to see anything. But you can sort of see there's some a couple of areas where it's starting to appear patchy, okay? So for starters, the reason it's like hard to see is that there's not enough contrast in our texture. So if we increase the contrast to something like three, you'll actually start to see it. And then you go, oh wow, okay. So this size of this is way too big. So I'm going to decrease this. There we go. Now we're getting some movement. Right, so it really depends on like how big do you want these areas where there's lots of sugar and like how, yeah, you know, <laughs> just decide the scale of your thing. I don't know what value I actually use for mine. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you can do it by eye. Something like that looks pretty good to me. I might change it later, but anyways. Um, and then for the contrast, uh, actually I might turn the brightness down because the brightness will actually drive the number of particles. Uh, points, points, not particles. Um, so as, yeah, the brightness, as there's more texture, it's gonna start uh, distributing to those areas, etc. So you get the idea. Anyways, if I turn the contrast down, you can see that it's less like there's like hard borders between in and out. Um, it's sort of more like blended, like they're sort of blending into each other. Um, and if you go like less than one, then it starts putting just a few little sugar pieces in where there's like a darker area, which is kind of the effect that I want. So I want something like that. And that's pretty good. So now if we give this a render, we get this, which is not a big change from before, but you can see there's a little bit difference, right? We've got like a clump here and like a kind of like a line of sugar here. And it just breaks it up a little bit, right? It starts to show your eye that it, yeah, this kind of feels a little bit more familiar to what I know rather than just, you know, uniform uh, sugar crystals, okay? So it's looking good, it's coming along, but, one other area that could be improved, right? So we have uh, this node here, this scale value, which is deciding what the scale, you know, this camera, because we're operating at such a tiny, tiny scale, it's too big and it's annoying me. So even though I'm gonna increase the length of this tutorial just to fix this, it's worth it. Okay, um, so we, we've decided which parts of it are gonna have like, you know, how small can the sugar be versus how big can the, the, the sugar be. But if you look at reference, you generally find like most of the sugar crystals are about roughly the same size. They're all kind of small, but then you get a few like big crystals, right? And I think it's cause like most of the big pieces fall off, right? So you end up with just kind of like a fine dust over everything. But some of the big pieces hang on. They got, I don't know, fused to the side of the jelly or something. So really what I want is, you know, I wanna set this scale kind of to be like a little closer. You know, something like, I don't know if it's that small maybe, but like something like that perhaps. And then I want just a few bigger pieces to just sort of appear everywhere, okay? Now there's a few ways you could do this. One way could be like, you could kind of like duplicate this chain here and create another chain down here and then have this uh, like basically have a separate density thing that kind of like makes big clumps appear. But then it's not being driven by the texture um, or you'd have to duplicate the texture, it kind of gets messy. So instead what I want to do, and it's also just a great opportunity to learn, you know, how to blend attributes and things. Um, we're going to do something fancy right in the middle here, okay? And I promise you it'll get complicated. No, I'll try and make it. But when I was first trying to figure it all out in my head, I'm like, this is way, you know, this is stupid, <laughs> but anyways, let's talk about it, okay? So this value here, scale, is working because it already knows what scale is and it's, it's applying it, right? But what I wanna do is I essentially wanna have two scales. I wanna have small scale for kind of everything, but then I wanna have a bigger scale, a separate scale, just for some areas, okay? So what I wanna do is give this a new name, okay? You could call it anything, but make it useful for you. Small helps, okay? Now when I've done that, it's basically switched off the scale thing. So now it's just using the default scale of these things, okay? So that's why it's all giant at the moment, but we'll know when we fix it, because it'll work, okay? So I've called it small. Now I'm gonna duplicate this, 
put it right after it or right before it doesn't matter the order of these is interchangeable right now and then i'm going to create another attribute and this one is going to be called big small and big and then this one is going to be much bigger let's go like 0.5 like a range of 0.4 okay so we'll have some in this range and then a few in this range okay then i want to have another texture to just drive where these big pieces are going to go okay so i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to drag this over and again, it could go in between this, it could go before it, after it. The order of these three really doesn't matter right now. All that matters is that we're basically creating new attributes which are gonna be used later on, okay? Um, so we're gonna keep position, uh, we're gonna change the result. And instead I want this one to drive a new attribute called blend. Okay, so we still haven't got to the scale yet, okay? Um, and then after this, let's move this over. Whoops, and we'll change the texture in a bit, but for now we'll just keep this as it is. Then finally, so we've got a small, we've got a big, and then we've got a texture, which is creating a new attribute called blend. Now to blend them together, we need to add in a attribute mix node, okay? So we've got four nodes here to do this little thing, but it's useful, it's useful information, even if it seems overkill for this little gumdrop. Um, Okay, so this attribute mix is very similar to the mix shader or mix anything if you're familiar with nodes and materials. Um, you've got an A, you've got a B, and then you've got a factor. But in this case, you've also got a result as in where is that thing going? What is it specifically driving? So we know that we want to, the one thing we do know is that we want this to affect the scale. Okay, so that's the result, okay, the end result. Then A and B, as you can probably guess, are going to be small and big. Okay, so into the end, small and big, like that. And then the factor right here, you can see is blending between the two, but we don't wanna have a simple, you know, factor, you know, thing like in, you know, like a mix shader, right? Sometimes you want something to plug into it. So you might think like, aha, well, I could take the attribute sample and plug that into there. That's not how it goes, because it's a green, right? You know how it works. The color can only go into the color, right? So that's not how that works. That is, by the way, Honestly, one of the most annoying parts of geometry nodes right now is that you end up with just really long chains, right? Because this is functioning in a very different way to material nodes, because material nodes, like in this case, I would just like have my geometry go there, and then I would like take this and I would like mix it in there, and then I would take this and I would put that in there. But in this case, you have to go, you have to daisy chain them, dit, 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 dit. Okay, now apparently, apparently, I was just talking to um, Arendelle, who is uh, somebody who really understands geometry nodes on Twitter. You can follow him. Um, I was talking to him this morning. He said, apparently version three, they're gonna introduce something called an attribute processor, which will actually make it function the way you would expect for like material nodes, etc. cetera. Um, it's just that this method is a lot more stable and it's easier for Blender to understand what's going on, um, but it's harder for your brain to understand. <laughs> but it'll get there eventually. It's a work in progress, Blender's improving things. Anyways, point is, I shouldn't have interrupted that, sorry. To finish this off, this, flow, this factor value here needs to be driven by this, which is the result, which is blend. So now we can change this from factor to attribute, and now if we just hit blend, it happens, the magic. <laughs> Right, so it's now being driven by this texture here. So we don't want it to be the exact same texture. So I'm gonna hit that little number next to it. And then let's give it a name. Big, biggie smalls, why not, right? Uh, a little throwback to my teenage years when I was obsessed with Notorious B.I.G. I thought it was hip, I thought it was gangster. Probably was, <laughs> he's a good rapper. Anyways, um, okay, so this, you know, the, the size of this, I kind of want it to just be, I mean, actually, yeah, what, what sort of size do I want? Okay, so it's harder to see it because of course the position is being decided. Um, I could improve it just by increasing it. Okay, now I can actually see what's sort of happening. So now as I sort of move through it, you can see we've sort of got this wave that's deciding which parts are big and which parts are small. Okay, so something, something, let's go a contrast of two. No, let's go to the max, because I really just kind of want like a like a couple of like big, big sugar places, right? Big, big crystal sugars, okay? But that's kind of it. So I then want to drive down this brightness. Let's drive it down. Oh, does it not go? <laughs> is that as far as it goes? Okay, maybe I'll make the contrast three or something. 
Okay, so something like that. So we've got sort of got some big clumps in there. Okay, and then the size of this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's kind of what I was after. Which is like a few big pieces that are sort of hanging on. All right, and now let me drop the count back. Well, not that. All right, we've got to go something, something a little more than that. Let's go 1500. No, 2000. Because we're working with like, like with these smaller particles now. So it's like kind of to fill it in, you got to increase to more than what we had previously. Um, but let's have a look at how this looks. All right, and this is what we got. It's pretty good. It's, I mean, that's basically the whole point of this tutorial. I mean, we've, you know, if you wanted to really get that exact match to what I had, it's really just playing with, um, you know, the, 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 the size of this texture and that texture and the brightness and, you know, controlling which parts have the, the big parts, how big are the big pieces and just sort of playing with it by eye uh, with a reference next to you. Um, but if you want to download this uh, finished result here, this gumdrop, um, I'll put the link in the description so you can download it and play with it. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it. And if you wanna see more tutorials, podcasts, and 3D related content, hit subscribe. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.